Everyone pneumonia. People can get it in various ways. As a kid, I was told that you got pneumonia by falling into a cold lake, but that's not the only way. In fact, it's actually one of the leading causes of death worldwide, but more on that later. First, we have to talk about the lungs. The lungs are a soft and elastic organ that allows the exchange of gases in and out of the body. The main ones being exchanged are oxygen into the bloodstream and carbon dioxide out. The lungs are like tree roots. They start very large and they branch off and get smaller and smaller. The larger branches are called bronchi. They branch into smaller bronchioles, which then leads to the small air sacs at the very end called alveoli. In these small air sacs is where the gas exchange is done for the body. Pneumonia is an infection of the lungs, and this causes the alveoli to become filled with pus or fluid. This reduces the very important transmission of oxygen and carbon dioxide. The symptoms can be chest pain during coughing and breathing, a cough with phlegm or pus, fever and sweats, chills, fatigue, confusion with older patients, and generally just breathing difficulties or shortness of breath. Depending on the patient and the situation, pneumonia can range from very mild to extremely severe. The main cause of pneumonia is bacteria, but it can be caused by viruses or fungi. There are also secondary causes that can lead to it, like ventilator-associated pneumonia. When a patient's on a ventilator and then gets pneumonia as a result of pathogens entering the lungs via the tube, or there's also aspiration pneumonia, which I made a video on. Pneumonia is also often acquired when people are bedridden and not moving. moving. Usually they're very frail. The main issue is that they're not taking deep breaths with their lungs and they're not able to clear any secretions. So bacteria can easily just enter the lungs and cause an infection. And if they're in this state, they're often too weak to fight it off and unfortunately they die. This is why it causes so many deaths. One illness might make a person bedridden and weak, but pneumonia then brews and actually kills them. Depending on the cause of infection and the severity, it would determine the treatment. A patient might just need a dose of oral antibiotics, and that's it. Some patients might need IV antibiotics and IV fluid, medications to open the lungs, like ventilin and atrovent, medications to control fevers, oxygen, or even a ventilator in extreme situations. Depending on the effects of pneumonia, the treatment will vary. Hospitalization would be needed in extreme cases. The main diagnostic tool would be a chest x-ray. Blood tests and a sputum sample might be taken to determine the exact pathogen and cause, but since the most common bacterial, usually an antibiotic is the first line of treatment and given after an x-ray confirms pneumonia. Often no other diagnosis tools are needed because the antibiotics work. The next thing we're going to talk about is prevention and decreasing severity. Vaccines are the first thing you can do. Some types of pneumonias actually have a vaccine associated with them. Getting this is important if you have poor immune systems or for the elderly frail patients. The standard childhood vaccines are also important along with getting the flu shot especially if you're in a high-risk population. Make sure you practice good hand hygiene by washing your hands. It decreases the spread of germs and lowers everybody's risks. It's also very helpful if you keep your lungs healthy. Don't smoke and make sure you exercise. Smoking damages the natural defenses and hardens up your lungs and makes them less elastic. If they stay elastic and strong, you're more likely to be able to cough up phlegm or pus, making recovery faster and easier. By exercising, it actually keeps them elastic and strong. Next, tr next, try to keep a healthy immune system. Eat a proper diet full of vitamins and minerals. This can prevent illnesses and infections. Lastly, for the bedridden patients, it can be prevented by performing good oral care and trying to get a patient to sit up and exercise their lungs through deep breathing and coughing or the use of an incentive spirometer. This keeps the lungs strong and moves around any phlegm that could remain stagnant and brew an infection. Pneumonia is such a big category since there's so many different subcategories within it. So I just did a light little brush over it and the basic concepts that are important to the everyday person. So if you liked what you saw, like, comment, and subscribe. And more importantly, have yourselves a good day.